Hey guys, welcome back. Today, I'm back up in the attic doing some work. Now, I've already straightened out the attic, leveled out all the insulation, fixed all the wiring that was going everywhere. I've also sealed up all around the can lights that are in the ceiling. I've sealed the electrical boxes and the tops of the walls with the spray foam so that there's no air leakage from the downstairs up into the attic. So I'm gonna insulate this better, but I need to fix some framing before I do that. So. The owners, before we bought this house, they had torn out a load-bearing wall downstairs in between the kitchen and the living room. And it looks really nice now, but the problem was they had to fix that load-bearing issue by putting a beam up here. And you can see right here, there's a beam running the length of the section where they tore out the wall. They have straight supports going up to the peak of the roof to hold the roof up. But then instead of putting in these braces that were here, originally along the walls that were here they just set them on top of the beams so the problem is right now they are way too steep of a pitch to where that's not holding any weight pushing down the angles of these aren't even cut to match so it's just a couple nails holding it most of them are loose i could almost pull them out by hand and that's no good at all because these are starting to sag from here down there's kind of drooping a little bit it's getting noticeable it's not really really bad but we're gonna fix this by putting in a knee wall along the strong backs on either side of the roof so we're gonna get to work doing that and try to fix this issue that we've got because right now this is a mess I don't want to insulate further before we get a chance to fix this now I mentioned strong backs and tying those into the supports to support the trusses and this is a typical style. We're going to be using a 2x6 standing up on end, a 2x4 laying flat nailed into that 2x6 at the bottom. We'll nail straight down through that 2x4 into the rafters. This will tie every single one together. That 2x6 is going to support the load and it will distribute that load across all of the rafters that we're tying into the span of that 2x6. Now we're gonna need two of these strong backs, one for each side of the roof, and they're gonna need to be 16 feet long. Unfortunately, we're only able to get 12 foot boards up into the attic, so we're gonna have to offset those seams so that we can make this a little bit stronger while still having seams in the strong back. Also, my father-in-law is gonna be helping me out with this project. He knows a lot more about this stuff than I do, so I feel a lot more comfortable with his help on this project. Now, all these rafters are tied into that center beam that I mentioned before. This is the load-bearing uh, beam that they put in, and you wanna make sure that you're not going too far out with these strong backs, or else you're gonna put a lot of pressure down on the ceiling and could cause damage by bowing the ceiling down or cracking the sheetrock. So we're only going out two feet from that main beam and all of these rafters are tied in. We checked, they have hangers on them. They're attached really well. So we're not worried about the pressure going down on this. Two feet is not far enough to cause those boards to warp at all. Now, once the strong back is in place, we're gonna come down through here and put three inch long screws into the rafters to pull them up into place. And you can see a couple of them were a little low, so that's gonna be evening everything up and distributing the weight across all of these. Next, we're gonna put two nails from the nail gun in each of these to make sure all everything holds really well once they're all in place. So we know just by the look of these braces, they aren't doing anything. The roof's already sagging a little bit. So it's safe to take these out without doing any damage or causing this to drop anymore. So we're gonna take all these braces out so we have a little bit better work area and can start installing the new braces. Once these are all out as well, I'm gonna use some of these to cut and reuse these two by fours. These ones are much longer than the ones we're gonna need so I can easily cut the nails off on the ends and not have to bother with those. Now we're gonna be lifting up on these boards in order to correct the sag in the roof. 
and we're going to be doing this by using a 2x4 to pry on it and this works really well because it limits the amount that you can lift up and it also we're going to be using the strong back we just installed to pry on so it's a good gauge uh, to see if we're pushing too hard down on the ceiling to cause any damage that way we can keep a good eye on it instead of using something like a jack where you can't really tell how hard you're pushing up or pushing down on the ceiling this is a lot easier to manage now the next step will be cutting all the supports. I'm going to go through and cut all of them ready to go. Now if any of these need to be trimmed, if we can't quite lift up high enough, I can certainly do so as needed later on. But it's important at this step to make sure that the angles are exactly correct. That way the joints will be as close as possible. It will be much more load bearing and the nails will hold a lot better too if you have everything tight. Now you can see as we go down through here, I'm going to be prying up on each individual truss, lifting up so that we can put the brace inside. And then we're going to be putting probably four or five nails on the top two by four into the truss and then about five or six down in the strong back into the two by four and through the two by six into the support as well. Hey, if you like this video so far, don't forget to hit that like button down below. It helps me out a ton. Thanks guys. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. I upload a new video each week. So if you wanna stay up to date on my newest videos and what I'm working on each week around the house and DIY projects, hit that subscribe button. Now this side is in a lot better shape. It's not sagging. There's a few that we'll need to pry up on, but these supports definitely are preventative as well. So we don't want this to eventually sag. So we're gonna be putting in a support on every single truss going down through here as well. Now we could stop here, but we're gonna go a little further and increase the strength of the roof a little bit more by adding in two by sixes across the top of these supports right up against the trusses. This will tie all of those supports together and tie all the trusses together so that they don't only support their own weight, but they start sharing the load with the one beside it as well. So that will really strengthen it up and keep it from bouncing or if there's any impact on the roof or work being done up there, it will support the weight a lot better. So again, we weren't able to get the full two by six up here. We had to bring it up in a couple sections. So we're gonna put in a 12 footer, a four footer, and then we're gonna use another four foot to span the gap in between the two. 
and this will really strengthen it up and tie it all in together as one. Alright guys, thanks for watching. Hope this video was helpful for you. This is really an issue that a lot of older houses have, so if you have a saggy roof, hopefully this helps you out a lot. If you like this video, hit that like button down below. If you have not subscribed to my channel, hit that subscribe button. I upload a new DIY home improvement video each week, so don't miss out and hit that subscribe. Thanks guys, I'll see you in the next one.